Hi there and welcome to the Malak Cookery Channel. Today we're going to be making a variation of a very old Texas recipe called Wrangler Ribs and the spice blend from the Demalak range we're going to be using today is the Texas Ranch Barbecue Rib and Steak Rub. Now this is a variation on a very old recipe as I said, it dates back to about 1870. I've made some alterations to it. The original recipe uses what they describe as tomato pulp. I've tried it, it really isn't that nice. So we're going to be using tomato ketchup. The original recipe talks about beef ribs. We've only got pork ribs today, so that's another change to it. But it's, it's basically a very similar recipe. It's got a bit of a bitter sweet taste to it. It's certainly something completely different to your normal glazes, especially the ones that come over from the US. I like it. Everyone that I've uh, cooked for said it, it's a really nice and, and different flavour, so I'm hoping you guys like it as well. As usual, a full list of ingredients are given at the end of the video. So let's start off by looking at those ingredients on what we're going to need. Okay, so what we're going to need for the Wrangler ribs is one kilo of ribs. Again, beef ribs, but I've got pork ribs here. We've got 35 grams of the Texas Ranch barbecue rib and steak rub, the Demolat Spice. We've got 75 grams of brown sugar. 100 grams of tomato ketchup. A large mug of strong black coffee, so this is two teaspoons of instant coffee in here. And then two measured tablespoons of corn flour in a little cold water. So the first thing we want to do, the one thing about this recipe and recipes like it is it uses two methods to actually coat the meat. One is a dry rub and the second one is to place a glaze over the top. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen because I've, I've, I've seen different recipes, but what I prefer to do is I, I, I prefer to have a connect between the dry rub and the glaze. It doesn't make sense to me that you have one set of ingredients for the dry rub and then a completely set of ingredients for the, the glaze. There's no connect there. So we're going to use some of the Demala Texas Ranch barbecue rib and steak rub as a dry rub or a dusting for the actual ribs themselves and the rest of it is then going to, going to go into the actual um, glaze itself. So the first thing we need to do is to just give the ribs a light dusting of the spice mix. Okay. Let me just rub that in. Turn it over. So don't go too mad with this bit because something like this, or if you're using your own spice mix for this particular recipe, if it's a pure spice mix like this and it's finely ground, so one of the things that we do with a, um, a rub like this is we grind it very finely so that it soaks, soaks into the meat better. If you've got a similar, if you're using your own spice mix for this and you've done a similar thing, so you've ground the spices quite finely, then be very sparing with them because they are, spices on their own are actually quite powerful. And you don't want to overpower the meat just with one set of spices. Okay, so that's the meat covered. The next thing I want to do with this now is I'm going to place this meat into a bag and I'm going to put it into the fridge for a couple of hours. That will allow all of those spices to actually soak through into the meat. Once I've had it in the fridge for a couple of hours, we're going to come back and I'll show you how to make the actual um, glaze itself. So while the ribs are in the fridge, for a couple of hours just soaking up all of that dry rub the next thing we want to do is we want to make the actual glaze itself so we take our 
large mug of strong black coffee on a medium heat we add into that our tomato ketchup mix that in Then I'm going to take a small whisk and put in the remainder of the Damala Texas Ranch Barbecue Ribbon Steak Rub. And just whisk that in. So I measured this, we actually had about 15 grams left from the 35 grams. that we coated the uh, ribs with. So make sure that's mixed in well. We then put in the brown sugar. Now as the glaze comes up to a gentle simmer, we now add the corn flour mixture. down so we're just going to cook that through now for a minute or so and what we're looking for is a fairly thick glaze almost a consistency of, of like a thick syrup Okay, so that's finished now. What we're going to do with that is we're going to allow it to cool. By the time the ribs are ready to come out of the fridge, this will be uh, cool enough to actually place on, onto the ribs. Okay, so the ribs have now been sat in the fridge for about two hours. Those spices have started to penetrate into the, into the meat. We have our glaze and we've separated some of the glaze out. So this part of the glaze will be used to actually glaze the ribs just before we serve them. So we want that to be nice and fresh. So the next thing we want to do before we place these ribs onto the barbecue or into the oven, depending on how, you, uh, how you're going to cook them, is we need to glaze them all over. So the glaze that comes out is fairly thick and that will give us a nice coating over the top of these ribs. Okay, so that's these ribs coated on both sides. We're now going to get these on the barbecue. You could cook these in the oven, but I should imagine these would be great on a smoker barbecue, but unfortunately we don't have one. So let's get these on the barbecue and get them cooking.
So there you have it, Wrangler Ribs, a cowboy inspired glaze. Please subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And of course, just one more thing to do. Mm. I will never have guessed a coffee based glaze will be so nice. Completely different to your American based corn syrup uh, glazes but the flavour is just unbelievable. Thanks for watching.